I'm Tanya Buckingham. I run the cartography lab. That's my, my main gig in the geography department. And uh, I ta I've taught this blended format class twice. It's a different topic each time. And I'm sure that what I show you here can all be done through university learning tools, but I don't know how to use them. And this is what my default is. As you can see, I use Google Docs for, or I guess it's Google Drive now, right? I'm showing my page today. Um, I use it for just about everything. Um, so this is just a sample. Like I organize my personal life with this. I organize um, my parents, my my parent organization with my kids. My like these are these are gifts, gift ideas. You know, like cause I can get it on my phone and I'll be like, oh right, this is a great gift for a four year old. Then I can remember when you know. Anyway, um, my Google Calendar. And the great thing about Google Doc or all of the Google apps is that I can share them with exactly the people that I want to see them. Right. So my work calendar is shared with all of my students. My um, my personal calendar is shared with you know a handful of people also, so that when I'm not where people think I'm supposed to be, they have access to where they can find out where I am, and I'm very active in that. Um, so uh, so professionally, I use it. We we've written a grant using Google Docs, and we go through all the tracking and everything, with all the changes. Um, I use it to manage basic Cart Lab stuff, like. Oh, I just took a group to New York, so we organized the whole the whole trip by by Google Docs. Um, project management stuff, right? So this is a student's hours that she filled, um, and sh and this is important for us because we build hours. You know, the students log their hours in Chronos, but all that gives me is a, as a total for what they've what they've worked on. Uh, we've got tons of clients that we're working with regularly. I need to know which project she was building those hours to. Okay, so all that stuff. But why we're here today is to talk about how to use it to teach. So I used it, I, I started using it um, as I was going through the Blend at UW course. Um, let's see. And I just, I took the, the form that we were given and converted it into a Google spreadsheet. And part of the reason that I, I like doing this so much, it's displaying a little strange right here, but, um, is because I always have access to it then too. I can I can update things on my phone if I'm in a pinch. Um, I can I can do a quick view on my phone easily. Um, all those things. And then I used it to actually organize and run my course. And so I've like I said I've taught this class twice. The first one we were creating maps um, for a um, a free health clinic in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And they, um, it was people who, people who use the clinic are typically underserved. Most of them cannot read or write. Um, if they can, often it's not English. And so the nurse that we were working with had a GIS background, and she really wanted the students to have access, or sorry, the students, the, um, her patients to have access to all the other services in the area, but they, didn't, they couldn't get there. They didn't know where they were. They were a distance away. They were going to have to drive. But you can't just hand them a map. And so the course was all about how to design those maps. Um, and so we set up this little here. It's a blended format class. Um, this was a huge experiment, right? The whole thing. I had never, I had never used this format. I had never put it all together in this, um, in this setup. Um, but what we really do is we use these I use this syllabus as the, the point place to get to all of the information for the course, right? So we started out the class with setting these expectations and goals. This was our first meeting. And so everyone shared on this, in this process. And then what do, you know, what do we want to get out of this course together? What do we expect of one another? And that was then always accessible to them. And so it could be edited, added to, all of that sort of thing. And this was done in the face to face, right? This was done in the face to face, right. Yeah. So this, this, these are the students' own words. These are the students' own words. So they came up with the class policy together, and that yes. helped them come up with this cohesive community. Exactly, exactly. So what, what we, I had a big flip chart, and I, you know, I wrote it all down as they talked, and then I transcribed that and put it in this Google Doc, and then linked it from the syllabus. Um, and then we could revisit it and we could update it throughout the year. It was a living document. Just like the syllabus, they treated the syllabus very much, it, it was a living document as, um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but 
as we did this course feedback, which I did all through Google Forms, um, it was a weekly feedback session. You know, they had three to four questions that I was asking them. This one I think is the end of course feedback, the unofficial evaluation. So this is a little longer than, than what each week was. I really tried to keep them, them short. Um, and, and then I would look at those, and then I would look to see what adjustments needed to be made to the syllabus. Um, so one of the things that I needed to make sure that I was talking to them about was what's changed on the syllabus. Where, where, you know, because some of them, I meant this to be this living document, and some of them printed it out and weren't revisiting that digital version of it regularly. And so I had to come up, I think this version shows, this is the second time I have taught the class. I started highlighting the things that had changed so that they could just scroll through here. Um, they could just scroll through there and look for the things highlighted in yellow um, so then they would quickly know what had been changed. I thought it was great. I thought it was really clear. I tried to keep this really clear schedule of like, your readings are done on this day, we meet this day, you know, and the students, the way, just the way that I had structured this, they found it to be a little confusing. And so, um, one of the students created a, um, down here, solution. one of the students created a spreadsheet uh, and then shared it with the class. And it had all of the deadlines and the date that it was due. And that was great because they could really quickly see this, the syllabus because it's this living document and it's really dense with all of this information. It wasn't really easy to just go there and say, oh, here are my due dates. So that was really handy. She did it as an Excel doc. And if I, would, if I were to do this again, I would do it probably as a Google doc. Encourage students if they want to manage their own um, to download it, a copy of it for themselves. Um, but then that way too, that, that that can also be a live document that's changing as those as that feedback is changing, and you know they're saying like we can't keep up with the readings, um, or we're going off track here a little bit, or I need to know more about this before we can proceed. That's the sort of feedback that we were getting. So um, this is, I, and I, I sort of assumed that what I could do, um, I, I was thinking maybe if we could make a parallel copy of it, um, and then somehow live link that to be updated. I don't know. I assume Google can do that, but I haven't figured it out yet. Um, so you say, does yeah. Google track all of the changes? Yes. On the documents, like, can you go back? Yes, okay. it does. It can track all the changes. So you can do it either as uh, um, as like a, a word track changes kind of thing, um, or you can go into. There is another way to look at the all the changes that have been made. If you have a lot of people making changes, there's it can get really chaotic. Um, but yes, it is a way to go back and see what's been changed. Is it similar to the one done in the Microsoft Word where when you have these reviews with the like right. right. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, actually you just go right up here and you click this editing and then and then it just it right. turns it that basically turns on the track changes. So what's the problem the student go to the editing and track the editing to see what happened? Yeah, they could. They could. So more what, she, what the what this student was saying about this was she was confused about the order of so just the order of how this this syllabus was kind of structured. Um, and as you can see, the the readings were were pretty intense, and then they had they also had a written component um, every week. Um, so it was just a lot to keep track of. So she just really wanted it laid out in the matrix for her um, in order to manage. And then all of these, so this is the second class. Can I yeah. I assume that you didn't allow them to make changes. Right. So it was only for your editing ability. Right, for the syllabus. Right. For other documents we shared, um, they were able to edit them. Yeah. Um, so the second class, the second version of teaching this, um, was designing an interactive map to collect stories for uh, early stage Alzheimer's was the initial design requirement for it. Um, and the, the point is there's a, there's a startup sort of launching out of our lab to, to create this program 
And so it was also a lesson in entrepreneurship for the students. Um, so we, we went through things, some business concepts, but then also they had to really wrap their head around what it, what early stage Alzheimer's really looks like and what it means. So part of their, part of the course included interviewing um, people with early stage Alzheimer's and their caretakers. Um, and so that process, uh, we managed through, uh, right here, interview questions which the students then, they all worked on these together, editing this document, then they all rated them as to how, you know, how important they felt they were, you know, where did they want to put them in the ranking of where to ask questions. Um, this worked very well. Um, so, shared docs. So, the, the goals and expectations, we never revisited. Um, and that was a, a, a what, this is what didn't work, right? So we never revisited them. Um, that was sort of just an, a failure on my part. We should have more actively been engaged with those. Um, let's see. Yeah, some of the documents that I set up, so I had structured a bunch of these documents beforehand, and in shuffling things around, I sort of lost track of them. So I think organizing my Google Docs, um, my Google Drive a little bit more carefully instead of, I rely on Google search to find everything. <laughs> um, so structuring this more in the way that I structure a project, um, which is really where my, um, my strength is, is, is structuring, is file structure for a project, and I didn't treat my course this way. So taking that into my course would have been very helpful. Um, so the students also logging with their list account for they use their personal. Yeah, so actually I have that down here as one of the tips, and I know I'm, I'm probably running out of time, right? Um, one of the things that people don't know yet across campus is that they have access to Google Apps through their WISC account. Um, every time I set up a project and share it with my WISC account, I get a person, I get a request from their personal email from somebody, and they say, I you know. Also the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, so one of my colleagues actually put together a little email, a little help email that says, you can log in with your WISC, um, to which then I got a response saying, oh, great, another Google password, you know. I was like, no, it's still your same stuff. Um, I think we're getting there. People are starting to understand. Um, it's not with advertise and they give them Yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm jumping all over the place. So, so that's on here. That's you know, people still don't understand. We have UW, UW accounts. Um, so, the useful tips, permissions, always permissions. There's always an issue that I haven't shared it with the right people, um, or I've shared the specific link, but when I've embedded that in the file, then it's not shared because I sh I chose to share the link with anybody who has the link. Something like that. Um, Linking documents, that's the, that's the most powerful thing that I found. Again, all of my, all of my organization for, for Google Docs is set up as like, this is the repository, this is the table of contents to get you to all of the stuff. And that includes all of my linked documents. So we stored all of our readings on, bot, on uh, Dropbox, because we have a, an account for the lab. When I redo this, they'll all be stored in Google Drive, and then there'll be a, a folder that I just share with everybody, and they'll have access to it that way. But each individual article had a link that took them directly to that article on Box, on Dropbox. Um, how do you, how would you handle a transition? Say, for example, if someone were to take over your class or some of your duties, using this format, how do you then transfer everything to them? Oh, the ownership of all the documents. I can, you can share ownership. Um, or I think you can actually transfer ownership. You can transfer ownership from your WISC.edu account to any other WISC.edu account or from your personal account to any other personal account. It does get tricky, if, and this happened to me, where I had things that I was using my personal account for, and I was like, great, now I have a UW account. I want to use all the stuff that I had been doing for work on my personal account and move it over to my UW account. That got tricky, and there are apps out there to do that. I can talk about that as well. Yeah. Yeah, and I manage three different types too because I'm also a grad student and at a different university. 
And so that they use Google for their for their email and all that sort of thing. So I've been constantly going up here and switching, you know, which browser it thinks I am. So I have, you know, three for me, which is UW personal and then my grad school account and my daughter. And <coughs> NASIS is a national organization that I run. So um, you know, just always switching between those tabs. <laughs> so I have a question about the syllabus. You mentioned yeah. So the syllabus was sort of fluid in that you make changes as you go. Yeah. I was just wondering if you could talk about the students' reaction to that, because we, and John, you can you understand that students um, in school of nursing do not like having changes in the syllabus. Yeah. They come in, have a set syllabus, they know what the assignments are, what the expectations are, and they sort of move. And when changes are made, then they get very uncomfortable with that because changes yeah, this whole class was a stretch for the students. Conceptually, both times I've taught it, it's been a stretch. Um, but then also just the format. Not many of my students are, are, at the time, I think this is changing now, but they had never taken a blended format class. They didn't understand just the general expectation um, of how much work needs to go in on, on their own time. Uh, well, on their own time, right? It's actually class time. Um, so we had a lot of conversations about this is how we're going to do this. This is, you know, provide feedback the whole time so that we can be improving it. And it was really, any changes that were made to the syllabus were a response to what the students were requesting. So they, I, th I think what, what some of the results was was that they really felt like they had an impact and were able to customize that experience. And we, but, but, but this is also, like the big key I think is setting the expectation at the beginning to say that, hey, things can change, and then listening for the feedback and saying, hey, look, I made this change because you asked for yes. it. Yes. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh, I can't blame her for the changes, because this is something that, you know, it's, it's my course too. Right. As a student, and that's, that's they feel powerful in that. But I also think that there's a, we've been, a bit large, we've been socialized through K-12 to like, here's the, here are the standards that we have to get through. This is the syllabus is set, approved by the school board, approved by whatever. It hasn't changed in 30 years or, or whatever. <laughs> and this is the way it's going to go. And we just check off the boxes as we go through that path. And I think that there's a, a real benefit in, in preparing students to be like able to handle change and to go with that. And if you set the expectations like, this is going to be different from what you've done, and let's swim with it and flow with it, I think that helps too. Yeah, yeah so I would go through the change, and, and I'll, I'll be honest, the, this, this whole class was uncomfortable to me because um, I felt like I was asking so much of them, which was not super comfortable for me. Um, I'd have no problem when, they're, when we're working on contract work and, and I can, you know, we're on deadline, we've got a client to meet, but when it's, this sort of feels different to me. So the, um, the, what, what I would do is I would go through that Google form, you know, I would do that evaluation each week, and I would then summarize all of their comments because the Google form kicks out an Excel, you know, spreadsheet, a Google spreadsheet. And so I would summarize those comments, and I would say, well, here's the trend when we have, you know, you need more of this, or you need this, or, you know, and here are the changes that are reflected in the syllabus because it's what you, you asked for. Thank you, that's helpful, and, and sort of involving them in the process and giving them ownership so they know that you're making these changes because they're sort of asking or needing right. this kind of support. Um, right. That's good, because we have not, I think that, that's been our issue. We have not sort of gotten um, involvement from the students in making the changes. Yeah. So, yeah. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So you, you just said that it was even uncomfortable for you. So this is obviously different from how you used to do so this, these are the first classes I've taught. Oh, okay. So, so I guess I'm just kind of curious if you feel like when you think about life as a cartographer mm -hmm. versus life as a student, do you think that they got some skills from working in this kind of change environment outside of just learning about yes. photography that will help them as cartographers? Yes, or, absolutely. And what would those be? Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, and, and that's what I, I didn't mention too, that when I was thinking about organizing this, I had thought, you know, well, I could go through all of the UW tools to do this, or I could use this format that I'm super comfortable with. Well, part of the reason that I'm super comfortable with this is because it's how I manage 
um, organizations that I'm part of, it's how I manage my client projects, it's how I, it's how I deal with colleagues across the country and across the world. Um, so getting them to fit, or getting them to understand this type of project sharing component of what they're doing is huge. Um, when you're working, when you're in a client-based industry, uh, everything's always shifting, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to be constantly changing your goals and reprioritizing what your deadlines are and all of that. So I think this mindset is, is hugely important for students to be able to keep up with. Um, and so our students usually go one of two places. They're either going to go to work for a client, to work in a client-based, you know, client-driven sort of sort of place, or they're going to probably go and um, build tools. And in both of those cases, that is always shifting. You know, it's either your colleagues who, um, if you're building tools, your colleagues are um, racing ahead on this one thing, and oh, you want to catch up, or you know, you have to be aware of all of these. You mentioned um, the syllabus and, and listening to the students. How would you go about getting their input? Would, you, would it be just a few students? I've had situations where the instructor listened to those few students but mm -hmm. then didn't ask the whole class. Yeah. And then it was like, whoa, but it doesn't, you know. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went back to this, um, these expectations. Right, so, or I, you know, like I sort of let these guide, and what I think one of the things on here is communication as a as a major bullet point. And one of the things is let's let's be friends, um, but uh, communication is huge, right? So, if there if I didn't see a really clear trend, I would go back to the class and say, all right, here's what someone's <coughs> saying. Do we all want this? Um, and we had set up a situation where if we had, we had set up a culture within that within our group to say this is a place for everybody to share get your opinion out there um, because not only again that's reflected in not only the the structure of the course but also in just the vulnerability of creating something doing something creative um, you're putting your ideas out there it's it's pretty vulnerable and you're sort of attached to this this art that you're creating. Um, so there had to be this really open and accepting way to, to share information. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much for the presentation. Yes. Uh, I was wondering, what, um, is that the only gateway to which the students access the information or the course material? That's, they don't have access to any of the files or the, the behind the, the, the file structure. There's no files that they access beyond when they go through the syllabus. The syllabus is like the gateway of everything in the course. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's what I was thinking. Um, if I were to reorganize this, um, I think what I would do is share with them the the um, the whole structure. So the whole where I would, if I would put it on Google Docs, I'd share the whole folder with them okay. of all of the readings. Sure. And then structure would be course, and then by week probably. Okay. And then all of the readings. But okay. this was the only way it was set up for them to, to access it. When you wanted them to walk through it every week, it was like the idea was they go through each week and they just they they walk walk through that activity, those what, those week's activities, and then the next week they go through the next week's activities. Right. Okay. Right. And then they just keep on reading through that document. Yep. And they yep. Keep down. And so yep. the changes then that you made, you made the changes to like it's week two, and you're like, oh, I, I you guys gave some good feedback. I'm going to change up the syllabus on week. Three. Three is that what right. you do? Okay. Right. And then they would be they need to be accountable for seeing what's going on each yep. week. Um, some of the other questions I was wondering as well, did you have any what was your communication like in this course if you're using just Google Docs? I mean mm -hmm. there's how, how are you doing how are you doing course communication? Um what was it? Like just email. Email. Right. Emails, chat, yeah. Hangouts, or yeah. I was like, we used yeah. Google Hangouts. We, we, chat. we didn't use Google Hangouts. I think um, if we'd had a larger, so the, each of these classes were only 10 to 12 people. Mm -hmm. um, if we had had a larger class, maybe. Yeah. I did encourage them when they were doing their group projects to, to work in any way that they, they wanted to, so that they didn't have to physically be in the same location. Now, I, the CART Lab, where I spend most of my time, is a pretty communal place. So most of them just wanted to hang out there and work together anyway. Um, but if it, if it had been larger, if we had had more people who, who aren't already in Science Hall, it would have definitely encouraged more using Google Hangouts, that sort of thing. 
And as far as my communication with them, uh, it, it's simply email. Again, small class, easy to do. So I have a follow-up on that question. So when I teach online, I usually go to the news section, and mm -hmm. so that's where I sort of update them on anything important, oh, yeah. important changes. So I was just wondering if you use that as well. I haven't. Oh. I haven't used that. So you did not use Learning UW, E2L, Moodle? Nope, none of it. <laughs> you're not signed up for Canvas next fall? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That, for me, that's the really interesting thing because the question that Lane had of, of um, and I think the question that your students had is a snapshot where they wanted to have a spreadsheet of it mm -hmm. because they wanted that one quick glance instead right. of like looking through the narrative right. to see what was going on. Yep. They just wanted a quick like, what's due when, yep. where, where are the boxes that they need to right. check off. Right. Um, and the D2L and um, Moodle and Canvas will have that sort of spread Chief yeah. Type layout of it, yeah. or you know, one sort of snapshot, and this did not in this narrative form. Right. One of the big questions that I that we put on the worksheet was, you know, how do you organize your materials in the course? <coughs> and so on the bottom of the sheet, and this is I think maybe a good time to transition to this. Um, we have all of these sort of questions, but this week instead of you know, usually at these labs, it's a uh, press this button and do this, and we try to step you through, in case you're not familiar with the things, how to get through and press the, do the technical aspects of these different tasks. And this week I thought, we really struggled with like, are we gonna show them how to create a Google Doc? Because um, we've had labs on creating Google Docs before, and, and it, it just felt like, this is the bigger problem is not how to create a Google Doc, or how to set sharing over, we can talk about that, but conceptually, how do you come up with this and how do you organize this? So a lot of our, our topics are around that course organization. Um, what, are you, what are your initial thoughts, having heard Tanya's story about the, the narrative and the spreadsheet, and um, is this something that is viable for your situation? Yeah. Well, I was thinking that if she had a, a thing where it just said week one, week two, week, and then it would link to the portions that they needed to look at. Because yeah. I get students all the time, your emails are too long. I don't, that's how I do it. But <laughs> your emails are too long. I don't want to have to scroll through. I'm like, well, what can I tell you? you right. <laughs> I might so also put you share, share, and it's okay. either in one email or it's in ten. Which one would you prefer? Are you, John? Are you going to show a table of contents feature? Uh, well, oh, what wow. I'm going to I'm going to show how I do basically the same thing. Okay. I put mine in WordPress, but the, the the syllabus is a Google Doc, and it's got links to like the course schedule and things like that. And the course schedule is a thing. What about just having the newest stuff at the top rather than? Like yeah, blog like, style. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Blog style. Well, and that's why, that's why I use the WordPress thing. Because the Google Doc is for the students who feel comfortable printing everything out, and they want a hard copy of that. With the WordPress thing, I use, the news, mm -hmm. I use a, a new post as a news blog type thing at the very top. So when they get onto the page, it's like, no, this week, because we had problems this last week, or because there is some interest in the class on exploring this, Let's do this, and here's you know sort of new directions based on what we talked about this last week. So it's very fresh and up to date. Um, about but that's that. using the D2L. Right? That's using WordPress, yeah, yeah, which WordPress. We, we talked about in a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have access to a website. Right. So the spreadsheet version. I, I'm kind of doing a, a, a yeah. it's a narrative, but it's also the spreadsheet sort of thing. Where I've got week one, here are the learning objectives, here's what we're doing in class, here's what your assignment is after class. I've got things like, here are the links that you need, here are the readings that you need to do. Click on that, it goes to Google Drive, and it opens up the PDF that I have on that. You know, and I'll have, you know, here are some other examples of how to do stuff, and so I do a lot of the live linking too, but I put it in a spreadsheet form. Mm -hmm. And in order to get it all across the page, because it's going to be looked at electronically, I do it in landscape mode rather than yeah. this. And I don't give the one-inch margins. I've got their quarter-inch margins here. So I can 
because the screens are rectangular mm -hmm. this way, right? They're not <laughs> vertical, so it's a totally different format. But it's kind of a neat way to, to change that. The core structure, like what this actually looks like on my Google Drive, is still, you know it's class period by class period, um, rather than by units or by other things. But I really liked what you had done, Tanya, from the, and, and I didn't ask you, but I have your a screenshot of uh, it. I then don't you think got that's the, the most complete the one, but yeah. yeah. And that has, you know, your course goals and your, your format and the sequence and the learning objectives for each class, pre-class activities, modality, assessment, you know, all of this amazing stuff that you should think about, but we often don't. Mm -hmm. But because it's in a spreadsheet here, it's like you can cop, write it down once and then each week revisit. Right. Do I have something on this? Have I thought about that mm -hmm. for this week? It's good. Right. right. Like, um, you're just, you're just, I'm just spitballing. You know, really. Uh, I really like I really like the idea of having a single stream that mm -hmm. entry point that syllabus um, because I think that I, we I'm actually working with Jonathan and we're working on a course and that's what we do like each week they just have a single document and that's how they access everything they don't go to the content mm -hmm. they just have one thing that introduces the week and then they just click on everything and they just go down the line which is kind of like what you're doing on mm -hmm. Google Docs and I was kind of wondering you're saying I want my syllabus to be a living document mm -hmm. well, that's really cool I, I like that idea. And I was kind of wondering if you took it the next step, and instead of doing just the syllabus where it's, they start at <clears throat> week one's at the top always, and week 15's at the bottom, mm -hmm. right? Is to, as you go, the weeks adjust. So whenever mm -hmm. they log into it, the first thing they see is it's week one, week. then week two, is week three is always at the top. And that way they are used to seeing it change. Right. Because otherwise right. they're still kind of thinking of it as a syllabus. Discussion. And now they're thinking of it as, as, this is my gateway into the course. Right. And that first week stuff is still there. It's just at the bottom. Yeah. And rotate it down. And they can review. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And I think yeah. I think a news feature is essential, but I really like the idea of just keeping it in one location. So yeah. probably just maybe each week you have that a link to say, check out this week's news, and it's at the top, and that's the first thing they do maybe. Yeah. And they click on it, they go to a Google Doc, and that's just the week's news and you talk about, oh, I made a change, this is week two, I made a change in week six. Right. If you're really interested in that because you're a nursing student and you don't want to freak out, <laughs> uh, you go down to week six and say, oh, she changed the date on this, I see. My sister's a nursing student, I understand. <laughs> and so, um, so, that's, uh, so that's what I was kind of, I was thinking that would be kind of a really cool way of adapting that and taking right. what you're doing already, just taking it to the next step. I yeah. guess with, that was just kind of a yeah, I, that's I was, a great idea. Especially with Jonathan is talking about like WordPress and yeah, so, yeah, yeah, great. Um, I'm to um, For example, when I was a student, I like to see the, the, the whole semester and sometimes go ahead with some mm -hmm. material, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you change, do you notice any problem with that with the students? So we were a little bit flexible on that for the students who did want to work ahead. Um, there was an understanding that that we may choose to either scaffold the the um, the reading materials um, or make some changes. So if they wanted to work ahead, that if we made changes like that, let us know what they've done, and maybe we can, if they, especially if it's with the readings, right, and we drop that reading. Well, now they have expertise that the rest of the class doesn't have, and so. But they don't get credit for it. But then what they, you know, so then we work with them to say, okay, well, you did these readings, then you're in charge of informing the rest of the class about what you read, and you don't have to do them with their readings because you'll get the benefit from from them of those or from your group of those. But it was it was again this constant communication of like, okay, if you're working ahead, what can we do with that? So on the go here, click this button end of this, there's two things that um, can that I thought of as you were talking to me, you were asking that question. One of them is, do you ever use the suggesting thing on the that little pencil in the upper right hand corner? So mm -hmm. it's essentially track changes in right. Google Doc, and you can do it in your own document. So if you have your syllabus and then you make a change, if you go to the suggesting mode first, mm -hmm. then John's going to demonstrate for you then your students will see the change that was made. So it's not a matter of them being like, wait, I thought this date was this, and now right. it's the thing, and did, did I remember wrong, or whatever. They can like see, 
we change the date. Yeah. So then that makes it really clear to everybody this used to be this and now this is this, and you can make a comment on why you changed it or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it kind um, of looks, works like if you're using track, track changes. changes. Yep. Yep. Right. 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 Yeah, but if you're using your syllabus as a living document, your students are going to freak out if there's a change made. And this is a really easy way to be like, you'll see the changes. They'll be very obvious. Right. Okay. So the second thing is, well, oh, one, one more on that. And then, like, once you get done with this, this suggesting thing that I think is, is brilliant, you can like accept it or you can reject it, but only you can do that as the owner. And so what I've done as uh, as an instructor is, if they have, if my students have a question, I give them access to college. So if they have a question, they can highlight this, and a comment will show up, mm -hmm. and they can't change this. So I can't, you know, I'm not going to give them the chance, the opportunity to change the syllabus, and you know, say, oh, that wasn't due for another three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I know exactly because I get emails about questions or comments to this, right. so I know exactly what part of the syllabus that they have a problem with. And you know, I, it's not like, oh, I have a question about the assignment. You know, vague, 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 vague. It's like highlighted right here, comments right here, mm -hmm. and then I can answer it, and I can just leave that on the right. side. So whoever goes to it next, it's not something that I have to send an email out to everybody because. Mm -hmm. Everybody who goes on to that from there on will get more explanation about because I've adjusted that. Yeah. Sorry, and the other thing is? The other thing is the um, Google Docs can do an automatic table of contents. Mm -hmm. And so um, I actually have a document I can show you really quick. OK. Um, but it allows, so Tanya's been showing like links to other Google Docs. But you can just, you can do internal links as well within the same document. and. Um, and so this is one that my colleague and I use and pay no attention to the content. The name of the document is Meetings with Chris and Margaret, because that's what we do. But, but this box here is this automatic table of contents. And so you go to the, the current meeting date, and then you just set it as a heading in the style here. So I'm just going to change the date here just to show you how it works. And then when I go up here and then I click Update here, then that item changes. And so I can add a new um, I can add new, new headings, and so then this becomes a living table of contents. So like if, you're, if you want a quick overview of like week one, week two, week three, week four, you just make each of those week titles into a heading, heading one or heading two. You can do a whole outline. We just use one level, but you could use heading one and then indent in heading two. And then it's a quick way for students to jump. So you could have a, a link in this table of contents to week one, and then Greetings, heading two. Right. Homework, yeah, right. that, and that you, way they can see very quickly what's due. And you just do it under Insert Table of Contents. And nothing will show up in that box until you designate something as one of the levels of heading with this style thing. But it's a great way to, with a really, with a narrative, from typing a lengthy document to like give quick jump points for students. So. Excuse me. I guess there is also a way to show on the lab the table of contents. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 You had that in one of your documents. Yeah. 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 It's just started showing up. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing about Google, every week they come up with like three of their apps have been updated. So exactly. once you started getting used to something, it changes. And so you have to, that preparing your students for a, a life of constant change is just the way that the right. world is going right, right now. And we're having a huge struggle with the uh, Central University yeah. with software updates. We're like, well. Should we hold off releasing it until the summer? And then we'll have, what, 5,000 changes? So we'll come back yeah. in the fall. And, then and then what we find out then, too, is then we're behind. Yeah. I mean, our, our technology for in cartography is changing so rapidly that we actually had, a couple of semesters ago, we had a, a lab. You know, It takes the summer to write the course. And the, the, so the lab, lab two was released for our advanced cartography class. And the technology changed. And it's, it's <laughs> internet technology, right? So they couldn't do their lab because a, a foundational, it was minor, but it was a foundational piece of what was required in order to do their lab. And so it's, it's a different you, paradigm that we're living in now. Yep. Yep. I would like to know um, how far the student can go in according to their interest. Uh, and, and also, have, how far have you not used With the Google Docs, yeah. like how far ahead can they go? Is that what you're asking? Or? No, no. Uh, how much they engage in the class? 
Oh yeah. Comparing with other class face to face that they yeah. are on, that you have done in the past. I, I you know I had the distribution of um, you know the range of what you would expect, but I had some students <coughs> who were so incredibly engaged, like the like the one who rewrote. The, the syllabus to the spreadsheet, right? So she was engaged deeply in the structure of the course. She was also engaged deeply in the content. Um, and I think, I think, I don't have a lot of, my sample size is not very big, um, but I think the fact that they felt like they had so much ownership of how to see this move forward. I mean, the, when we set out that first class period and said, how can this class benefit you in your progress towards what you want to do? Um, what are your goals to get out of this? And then we were able to sort of customize, again, a small class is really easy for us to be able to do this, but we were able to customize, I want to be you know, a software engineer and, and somebody else wants to be a designer. Well, we can make that course then um, so that they, they sort of fit both of those and it's personalized to them, but they also have to work together, which is a really important skill for them to learn also. Um, specializing in their area, but then having to communicate with one another and work as a team. So. Yeah. And I think setting the ex having them involved in setting the expectations from, the third, from day one certainly helps help with that. Yeah. That we have to work as a team. We have to be able to collaborate. Right. And then that carries through the rest of the semester. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that comes from my experience in um, in coaching. Uh, so it's, a, it's considered a designed alliance in professional coaching. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, a good way to start any meeting that you have. Nurses are open to that. <laughs> 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 so are there any other thoughts or ideas? We've got some very quiet people in the back there. Oh, OK. Uh, th there is one thing cool in the uh, Google spreadsheet where you can show the student the remaining dates or the assignment, like you can do something remaining days, uh, the due date minus now, oh. something. So they give you a total amount of the number of days left. Oh, cool. The assignment, I guess you that there is something in there. That's so really that cool. whenever they open the Excel sheet, they can know exactly how many days left for, right. for the assignment. That's and really they cool. They keep updating whenever they open it. Yeah. Have you ever used Morning W or other? Only? Or even, even in the distant past, as a, yeah. something like it. Um, only as a student or as, a, as an instructor? Um, only for the, the Blend at UW course, which I don't think we actually, anyway. So how do you, what do you like about using this, doing it this way? What do you dislike? I don't know about Okay. Top like, top dislikes. <laughs> um, what I like about it is that it's so comfortable and familiar to me. Um, so it's really easy. It's very natural to, to get into it. Um, I like that the students can take it with them. Um, and what do I dislike about it? You can do off, yeah, it, you can do offline editing with Google Docs. Um, so they could. They could have a version of it that they would work with, um, but they wouldn't have access to the content that I guess if their internet went down. Other collaborative aspects. Problem. Problem. Yeah, collaborative assets would be gone. What, is, and what do the students think about this? Because I know sometimes that's one of the things that students complain to me about, or I hear students complain about. Oh, there's too many learning management software tools mm -hmm. out there. I have to learn something else. Um, what did they really, what did they, so what, what were their thoughts on using this as a learning management pro, um, platform? And um, and some of the things for the students that you took away that they really liked and that they really disliked about yeah. this. Yeah. I didn't have, I, there were no comments whatsoever on, on this structure. And I think, again, I think it's something that's really <coughs> natural extension for mm -hmm. them. Um, it was the, the, the complaint was the, the organization of the, of the syllabus, like that could have been okay. approved, right? Um, so I don't think that there was hmm. any, I think all of them had Google accounts. I mean, even outside of their WISC account, yeah. they had their own Google accounts. 
they were familiar with Google Docs. In K-12, it's Google is huge. Is it? And it's like, yeah. I, in Wisconsin public schools, it's like over 95% of the public schools are Google schools now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they come in as freshmen, and they have been using it for at least, you know, the last three or four years already. My fourth grader uses Google Classroom yeah. and has her own email and everything. It has to be a family account because she's technically not old enough to have one, I guess. So they assign it to the family to get around that. But yeah. So they come in and they're very comfortable. Like they're more comfortable with that than they are with learning UW or Google yeah. or anything. There. That's cool too. We just use computers to play Oregon Trail. <laughs> <laughs> That becomes a bigger deal, and I would not. That's where I would go with a hybrid course. And so my course has got a lot of Google Docs mm -hmm. for the content, but it's it's within you know the, the the learning management system, so that they can always click on the gradebook and see where they are. Mm -hmm. And I still have that sort of immediate opportunity to make changes on the fly. How do you do with the grade? Right. You use your and no, actually, I do. I do use um, the Learn at UW to okay. do the grading. So this may be outside of what you're doing, but I was looking at the sheet, and I see that you have Kaizena and Doctopus on here. Have you been using those, or is that something? That's that something that we okay. just read about. And okay. Said, and actually, I was hoping that you would show up because <laughs> my <laughs> assumption is that you've tried both of these. I have played with them a little and want to play with them more, and so I was, okay. that's why I was asking to see if there was somebody who actually has right. implemented them. So those and unhangouts are the things that I'm focusing on at the moment. Okay. Um, what unhangouts is, and I just got administrative access, so if anybody wants to help me test it, that'd be oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, unhangouts allows you to have like a, um, like a lobby. Like a lobby of people connected over video conferencing, and then to create uh, um, sort of like group sessions where people can divide off into tens, basically into these little group Chat sessions. Almost, yeah. Like, yeah, and so, um, and then you can bring them back to the lobby also afterwards. So it's kind of a mm. upscale video conferencing. It's put together by MIT and incorporates Hangouts. The reason I'm so interested in it is exactly what you were saying before about how the K-12 students are coming to us with lots of experience with Google because mm -hmm. that's what they're doing in the schools right now. So if we can tie into what they're familiar with, that's one less hurdle for them. Yeah. Um, so. And on Hangouts is based on unconferences where right. you just get the idea of like you show up and you're like, I don't know exactly what I'm interested in, but Oh look, there's a poster for this session. I'm going to go sign up for that. Or let's come up with these sessions and sort of create these small working groups ad hoc. I'm, however, trying to see how I can use it purposefully, where I have like a workshop of people mm -hmm. who specifically want to focus on this topic, and it's not just any random human from around the world. Right. And so we'll see how that works. <laughs> um, so if anybody wants to test that with me. I need yes. people to join my little discussion up. groups. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See how it works. All right, Lane, great. last question. Sorry, I uh, take the last question. I hope it's a good one. Uh, the document <laughs> merge. Uh, document merge. The um, I was wondering how did you 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 know, brought this up or put this in the document doc the, under the medium ad yes. uh, the add on or is that you or, yeah. or you. Uh, there's a document merge. How does that work? Because that was one of the things I was wondering about as well. It's like one of the things I know students like to do, and one of the things I like to do, I like check boxes. And so that's one of the things I like about E2L and Moodle is you can you do things to see little boxes, you get kind of like a, a, a little scale, you can go up the scale and get 100%. Uh, and so what I was wondering as well is like, oh, I'd really like to be able to have the students when they go through there to be able to like strike through on the line what they've done. Uh, and document work seems to be something that maybe would offer that where they can they have an, they can do it says right here that they can do student specific information merge that with the document that you're changing constantly the syllabus and that they kind of merge them together into students 
seems to have a custom document for their own, which would allow them to do the strike throughs and stuff. Is mm -hmm. that, I don't know, is anyone familiar with the document merge? So I didn't use it, but I watched a video on it, and mm -hmm. it's it basically, yeah. Um, but basically, it creates, like, so you have your template document, and then you have your student, you know, specific information in, like, spreadsheet form, and oh, okay. it creates a new document for each student. Okay. But based on, okay. yeah, so I don't, I mean... I guess I, I was just wanting the students to be able to edit the chain, edit the document themselves, and only be able to see that, but at the same time still get changes from you. Right, it's kind of like we want to, yeah, this is what I'm, this is, I brought this up too. It's so kind of like you want to fork it, it yeah. but you want it to maintain those live updates that you're making to mm -hmm. the master. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Okay. I, yeah, I don't know if it would, if you change the template, if that then changes the documents that you've created yeah. with yeah. that. I don't think it does. I don't think it does. I think but it maybe, just creates. Maybe the thing like Doctopus or, or Document Merge would do this as a live thing. I don't know yet. Ooh. That's your assignment, Wayne. Is it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about it yesterday. It sounded like it was like the mail merge thing. Like if you have a letter and you want to send the letter to like another yeah. people and you have the, that it like drops everybody's name and, oh, document okay. and everyone gets their own version sure. of the document, but they're not, they don't continue to be linked to the main oh, Okay. Letter. It's just that I don't have to just say, dear Johnny, create a new document. Dear it's Sally, yeah. create a new document. By the we are officially out of time. I just want to make sure that you are free to go. We're, we're able to stick around and, and talk to you till then, but um, if you fill out these little green evaluation forms, that'll help us for next year. We're not going to help us anymore this semester. Nothing doing this summer? <laughs> no, other projects this summer. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah.